So I introduce Ted Fairhurst. I summited Mount Everest on the 23rd day of May, 2010. And do you want to know something? I had just turned 63 years old on the mountain. But where I want to really start this talk is where it all began. And it was in um, early December, around the middle of December, actually, 1969. I arrived in Kathmandu, Nepal. So one of the first things you do when you get to a new city, you've got to go find a hotel room, right? So I went and found a cheap hotel, one that you share, you know, with other travelers. And I got to my room, and there was this New Zealand guy there. And he, he was a climber. And you know something? He had just come back that day from hiking for about four weeks to the foot of Mount Everest. And he started to tell me his story. And that story so rocked me, it so utterly leveled me, that in my mind, within about 30 seconds, I said to myself, I gotta go do that too. But the only problem was I didn't have any mountain experience. I didn't know anything about that. Next couple of days, I went out to the marketplace and I got some provisions, and I went off into the hills. And somehow, within some period of time, some weeks, I got up to the, the base of the Kumbu Glacier. Now, the Kumbu Glacier comes down Everest, and I climbed that glacier up to the base, up to the foot of Mount Everest. How did I do that? But anyways, it took me 32 days to get back to Kathmandu. And you know what? People change people. That New Zealand climber who I didn't know, I've never met him since, he changed me. He literally inspired and motivated me. But I have a simple question for you. Why would I dare to do something like that? Why? I had no mountaineering experience whatsoever. I had no tent. I had only a summer sleeping bag. I had no, not even enough food, in fact. Uh, thank God people fed fed me potatoes along the way. So why would I do something as crazy as that? Why? Why would I dare to do that? And then the next story I want to talk to you about is, is opportunity again. So 1983 comes along, and I have an opportunity to take over a building, seven units in Montreal. That's where I live. And it, it's completely empty, it's, it's terrible shape, it hasn't been lived in for years, seven apartments, small apartments. But I'm able to take this building over for, uh, for just prepaying the interest for six months. But I, you know, I know nothing about buildings, I'm not a business person, I think that I have no business acumen at all. But it just seems right, like some of those other things I did in my life, it just felt right. So I borrowed $5,000 from my mother, and I had ma credit cards, I maxed them out, and I went and did the renovations, and then rented it out, and then refinanced it, and I liked the process so much, I decided to do more, and so I built quite a, uh, a real estate business in Montreal. The question is, why would I dare once again to do such a thing without any experience at all? Um, no knowledge about business, uh, no knowledge about real estate. Somehow I did it. I pushed through it. And lastly, I want to talk about mountaineering. So we'll come to that. We'll spend a bit more time in this field. So this is like late March 2010. And um, I get to uh, Kathmandu, and we all hike in to uh, the base camp of Mount Everest, which is about 18,000 feet. And um, uh, let me explain to you a little bit about high altitude mountains. So Mount Everest is obviously the highest of them all. There's 14 mountains in the world over 8,000 meters. And to climb an 8,000 meter mountain is not like climbing other mountains. It means you have to acclimatize, okay? You have to climb the mountain up to a certain point camp. One, let's say, uh, spend a few days there and then climb back down to base camp. And then next time you climb up to camp two, you spend some time up there uh, climbing and preparing and then you climb back down to base camp. Climb, you go the next time, next rotation, they're called rotations up to camp three and so forth. You come back down to base camp and then you're ready for your summit bid. That takes about 45 days 
on a mountain like Everest. Well, the next, this shot obviously is me on the summit of the mountain, and you know, I did it. You know, look at me, I'm not a big guy, I'm not a muscular guy, I'm not even a young guy. But it depends, you, you can see what happens when you have a goal, you have a dream, you have a determination, you go for what you, what you want to go for. There is one thing that connects every one of these stories. And it, it, is, a, it is a strength that we all have. Every person in this room has it. You know, it is stronger than our minds. And it knows us better than we know ourselves. In fact, it is a powerhouse if we nurture it. And if we build it, you know, grow it. And you know what it is? What is this, anyways? And I mean, we've been referring to all this time. It is simply our gut. That's all it is. But we have to listen. We have to listen to that gut. You know, our minds are funny. They overrule some good stuff that comes around. But our gut responds immediately to crisis. It tells you when something is right and when something is wrong, good or bad. It knows you, in fact, better. Your gut knows you better than you know yourself. It allows you to take advantage of opportunities. And I mention opportunities for a good reason, because all those stories I told you were opportunities I took advantage of. And they were from my gut. So our minds would have, would have you know, said no to us and all those things. You're crazy. You don't know how to, how to manage a building. You don't even know anything about business. You don't know anything about going in the mountains. You know nothing about that. Once you have made a decision in life to do something, whatever it is in your personal life or, or in your business life, anything whatsoever, that's the direction you're going. Even if you have to zigzag to get to that, that is the direction you're going. I think everyone in this room, every single one of us in this room knows that it's out there on that edge, that cutting edge, where our greatest success lies. Let me ask you a question. Do you, you, do you guys want to be good at what you do? Or do you want to be extraordinary at what you do? Do you guys want to live an ordinary life? Do you want to live an extraordinary life? Then listen to your gut. And then go make that decision. Thank you. Thank you.